five nights in the Kalahari. We spent the first two nights in Tuirafiran, which is here, and then Nosop, and then Matamata. Mata. When most people in the Kalahari say game being was bad, what they really mean is we didn't see any lions or big cats. And we could probably say the same thing. On the first day, we saw lions and we saw cheetah. We haven't seen leopards, unfortunately, but we've seen an abundance of other game. You know, a lot of giraffe, a lot of oryx, a lot of wildebeest, of course, springbok, and even a honey badger. In terms of game viewing and just scenery and just getting away from everything into the wilderness, it's been such a lack of stay. The Kalahari is a transfrontier park. In other words, it is located in both South Africa and Botswana. In fact, the border runs right through the middle of this building. If you are not exiting the park in another country, then you don't need to do passport control. However, if you're going to exit through Botswana or Namibia, then you would need to show your passport. Once you exit the gate from Tuirafiran into the park, the tar road ends and very shortly so does mobile coverage. The gravel road is not too bad initially, but it does get quite rough and quite sandy further on. So you need to lower your tire pressure to about at least 1.8 bar, maybe even less. About 20 kilometers from Tuirafiran on the road to Mata Mata, we came across this big guy. He was walking along next to the road, so close to the car we could have reached out and touched him. We had him all to ourselves for most of the time and we just followed him along the road as he walked along and eventually he hooked up with his brother and they disappeared across the dune and into the bush. But it's not all about the big cats. While they are for sure the highlight of any trip, the Kalahari giraffe are also something really special. A lot of the animals that we normally associate with Africa, lions, cheetah, leopards, elephant, crocodiles and so on are also to be found in other parts of the world. The graceful giraffe, unless it's drinking, is one of the few animals only found in Africa. Other species that are unique to this part of the world are the Gemsbok, known as an oryx in Namibia which is wonderfully adapted to such an arid climate. It can go weeks without water if necessary. The skittish springbok is also only to be found in this part of the world and is also uniquely adapted to an almost water-free environment. After a really good day game sighting, all things considered, we were on our way down to our rest camp at Tuirafiran and just happened to see this cheetah walking along the road. He took a stroll down to the water hole, had a drink and then went up across the road again and just chilled under a bush. What a privilege to witness such a thing and we had him pretty much to ourselves. We spent our first two nights in the park at Tuirafiran Rest Camp, which is the main one and it's the one right at the entrance gate. There's a well-stocked shop and this is the only rest camp with a restaurant, which is okay and the rest camp itself is very busy. Next morning we hit the road on route to our next rest camp, Nosob. Lowering your tire pressures to between 1.5 and 1.8 bar once you get onto the gravel is essential. That not only gives you a more comfortable ride, but it also helps to preserve the road surface. Most of the game viewing in the Kalahari is in one of the two riverbeds. River is a relative term because they are in fact dry riverbeds. They are only known to have water once every 100 years or so. The Aub River is in the west of the park and runs up to the border with Namibia at Mata Mata. The Nosob River is in the east on the border with Botswana, which is our route on this particular day. With a breakfast stop at Melkflay picnic site, one of the spots where you can exit your vehicle in the reserve.
It's a long drive to Nosop from Tuiraferen, about 160 or 170 kilometers. The speed limit in the park is 50 kilometers now, but to be honest, you can seldom do that amount. And also with stops for game viewing and for uh, bathroom breaks or picnics, you probably average only about 20 or 30 kilometers an hour. This one was not very exciting. There was a, a usual oryx, springbok, and some small animals and a few birds. Nosob is one of my favorite rest camps in the Kalahari normally. Although this time, I've got to be honest, the game viewing was really, really disappointing. You check in at reception where there is limited Wi-Fi available at a cost. And there's also a pretty well stocked shop where you can get pretty much all that you need. The chalets are comfortable, there is aircon, but just be aware that the power goes off at 9 o'clock at night until 5 a.m. in the morning. At the time of our stay, they were busy renovating and upgrading the chalets. So this was the old one, but in time to come, they are going to be modernized. After two nights in Nosob, we took what is sometimes considered the dreaded June Road to Matamata, just over 200 kilometers. There are two roads across the dunes. We took the longer northern route. But before heading across the dunes, we stopped for a breakfast break at Dukbald's Kolk picnic site. While a lot of visitors to the Kalahari avoid the dune roads, mainly because there's not a lot of game to be found on them, they've certainly got a beauty and a charm all of their own. And because they're avoided, there's less traffic. The dune road connects with the Aub River Road, just north of Kamkwa. From there, we turned north for the last leg towards our next rest camp at Matamata. Although it was the middle of the day, quite warm, and the game being wasn't wonderful, and we didn't see any more big cats, the Alb is definitely more productive for us than the Nosob side. Matamata is probably my favorite rest camp in the Kalahari. It's as far as you can go along the Aub River on the border with Namibia. There is in fact a border crossing to Namibia. We had the good fortune to stay in a riverfront cottage. Although riverfront in this case is a relative term, there is no actual river. As I've mentioned previously in this video, it only flows once a century, so it is a dry riverbed. There is however a water hole in front of the chalet. The chalets are more well appointed than the average chalets. They've even got uh, DSTV. Brying and watching the animals come drinking at the water hole. What a pleasure. Does it get better than that? There's just something about getting up at sunrise with your flask of hot coffee and heading out on an early morning game drive. We were rewarded with what is probably the best sunrise sighting of a herd of giraffe that I've ever experienced. That start of a new day is always something special for me. We had an awesome six days in the Kalahari, but eventually time to go home. And the first leg is the 250 kilometers to Uppington. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and your subscription is always welcome.